jab, up a cut, leave you laid out on the floor. Try to duck and roll, hit and miss. Now you counting stars, shoulda practiced more. Shoulda hit the mask, get out there more. Playing that you're the best. You gotta show me son, actions over words, baby boy, is you real or what? Talking way too much, where I'll come back sports, talking way too much, where I'll come back sports, talking way too much, where I'll come back sports, 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 sports. Shout out to the hottest chat in the MF and game. A side official, you already know. No negotiations needed. The first in the building, Big Blunts and Boston is on deck. What it do, Blunt? Salute to you, bro. He said, um, cheese, 78 cheeseburger said, Wilder with the devil. Yeah, there's going to be some definitely changes going on. I'm gonna cook on it. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm bring you some hot grease on this topic, because of course, I was waiting on this. I really didn't get hot and heavy. I wanted to sink in after the presser. I wanted to hear all the positivity. You know what I'm saying? I just wanted to hear it sink in, let people digest it, unpack it. You know what I'm saying? Get used to it, how it smell, taste, and look. You know what I'm saying? I really wanted them to remind me of pretty much what I spoke on when he was reigning champion. You know how his people look at him. But let me get Ryan Lyon out the way. Okay, we're going to get back to the best heavyweight of this era, Deontay Wilder. We're going to get back to him in a little bit. Now, as you already know what's circulating around is that Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia is set to fight this weekend. There's been a lot going on with Ryan Garcia, per se, doing all this, that, and the other, switching out, in and out of characters, just really showing that he's triple, quadruple polar. And, um, you know, he's he's a little rich, pretty kid who who seems to be bored with his life. You know what I'm saying? So he's steadily over here trying to convince people that in one in one breath he's doing well you know what i'm saying follow lord jesus christ as your personal savior and then the other part he's trying to gather a few you know what i'm saying bystanders onlookers fans casuals to to take a walk with him on the dark side you know and he's letting you know don't worry about it i got your back it's gonna get a little scary but i got your back he he is all over the place right now and fight week is upon us. One thing you can't stop is time. And we're here now. We're on fight week. It's Tuesday. And we finally get the face off on fight week. They cutting weight. You know what I'm saying? Attitudes is going to be short. I'm talking about short on the barometer of tolerance, y'all. It's going to be very short on the barometer of tolerance. I mean, they're not going to be feeling good. They got to balance them scales out. Ryan Garcia steps up in a Rambo outfit. He has no shirt on. I guess he wanted to show his abs, chest, pectoralis, traps, lapisia, you know, um, all that. Triceps, biceps, forearms. He, he wanted to let the, let the people know he in shape or whatever he was trying to do. Devin's wrapped up. Why? Because, um... You know, he's a pretty heavy dude in, in between fights now. And he wanted to keep it warm. You know what I'm saying? He wanted to keep burning off those calories, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? So he can't layer it up. Smart. 
very smart, very smart. So they finally, you know, um, close distance and start to engage in verbal sparring, tongue hus- tussling, tongue tussling as they call it. And yeah, you know, it was some, it was some worse exchange. It was some bitch thrown around and, and, and Ryan Garcia, this, this seemed like a little bit believable between him and Devin this time. All right. So Ryan kept on saying bitch and he was saying, a, you know, bitch with a, with a T, you know what I'm saying? TCH at the end of it. I was like, okay, 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 okay. And then Haney, Devin came out there with a, a, a trachea freaking shove. You know what I'm saying? Slash choke. He, he he pushed that man in his trachea. He definitely wasn't trying to have Ryan breathing well in the mid part of the fight to later rounds. Hey, and also, you know, um, Haney just let out a little bit of his freaking disapproval of what Ryan Garcia said about him attending the Diddy Swim Party, a pool party. You know what I'm saying? Um, he wanted to put it out there and make people laugh. To my, he had his 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 um shit tickled and all that. And Devin got down trachea choked that mug. You know what I'm saying? He he showed him, hey, this is not play play anymore. We on fight week. I don't I don't, I don't really want to be here right now. I'm cutting weight. I'm not feeling that well. You know what I'm saying? I'm short tempered. And Ryan came up there once again and got turned around. He he was shown the exit. How can you continue to show up to these these um, encounters and get involved? I'm talking about everything that you said leading up to this point. It's time to, to let that person know what you feel about them. And Ryan was pushed. He was shoved. He was almost goddamn missing a trachea. And he turned around and went from being on the floor past the first row and he, he started to talk sh- trash from the second row. I didn't quite get that. It was stupid. I said to myself, what does this do to inject some type of confidence in the fans to buy the fight that you're not going to quit? Like, I hear people talking about how Ryan is going to knock out Devin, right? And I keep on looking at these freaking encounters that they having of them crossing each other's paths and Ryan continues to turn his back. This might be just be a habit of him playing around. He did the same thing with Takashi six, nine when I, you know, the video I showed you, right? Y'all remember that video, right? Y'all remember that video or not? I'm not trying to take y'all doing, uh, down memory lane, but I'm just saying, do y'all remember that video? That's not it for sure. That's not it right there. Let me see if I still have it because I might have took it down, y'all. I didn't want to have Takashi out here, up here, um, and 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 some of the freaking pictures for too long. Let me see. Here we go, right here. Yeah, you ready to- like I said, I can't give him too much play, but you know, he's been goofy for a long time. He just didn't turn that way. So being that we on fight, we let's get down to it, man. Um, Both of these fighters are going to be leveling out the scales. I hope both make weight. I hope both of them make weight 140 pounds. Um, That's first and foremost. I hope nothing stupid happened. That the fight is called off just so we can postpone it and waste people time so the next fight can be in Vegas where they want it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm thinking I'm thinking like that. You know what I'm saying? I hope this fight doesn't come down to something at the last minute and this fight get postponed or rescheduled because they want somebody to believe that um, somebody was injured or something, whatever the case may be. You know, Ryan Garcia could pull many, many tricks out the hat. If he wanted to with that shove, you know what I'm saying? He can, he can say, you know, his neck is hurting. He can say his shoulder hurting. He really wanted to be petty and get and have his way and have this fight in Vegas. 
that that was the moment right there. He could do it. He could be very petty. You know what I'm saying? He could be very petty because I'm not I'm not knocking Haney for pushing him. He should have pushed him, man. After all the shit he was talking, he should have pushed him. Why not? You know what I'm saying? Why not push him in his trachea? You know, relocate his trachea bone from the front to the back. You know what I'm saying? Um, perform freaking on-site surgery. You know what I'm saying? Have that man breathing some funny. But it's dangerous. It's dangerous. That's all I'm saying. It's dangerous to play that game and shove somebody that close to the fight in the neck area. I can see the chest area. But in the neck area, you play around, and, 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 and that's how we breathe. You know what I'm saying? Like, something go wrong with the trachea or anything with the mouth, that fighter can absolutely, you know, cry, cry, um, cry wolf and say, I'm not feeling the way I'm supposed to because of the shove. Now, people will vilify freaking Ryan for doing this, but you got to be careful about how you approach a fight like this and, and, and the physical actions that you choose to take out the repertoire and use against your opponent. You have to be very careful, man. I would have rather, you know, a, you know, he he, he could have pushed him, mushed him. You know what I'm saying? He could have mushed him, open palm, mushed him or something like that. But when you start talking about the neck and stuff, we remember how Facility Lomachenko folders, I mean, his shoulders folded inward, and he looked like he was just a rag doll when Devin pushed him. And they ended up finding that man. When, when, when does that happen? When When do you hear people? getting fined here boxers getting fined for shoving you know what i'm saying you have to be smart about shoving your opponent because that opponent can bitch up and the fight can be off there's gonna be a lot of upset people there's gonna be a lot of upset people so he could be petty like that i'm just putting it out there but he definitely deserved it he definitely deserved it real talk Sticking boys fishing and sports on deck, man. Salute WCS. Salute chat fam. Y'all step on that like button. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you pulling up. You know, salute to you. Shout out to Haynes Legacy in the building. What's good with it, Haynes? Man, salute, man. Appreciate you pulling up as always. You know what I'm saying? Hope all is well with you and the fam, shout it. What's good? Tyrese is on deck. What's good with it, Tyrese? What up with you? I see everybody on deck, man. It's Tuesday. Definitely had to come on here and speak about the encounter. Um, you know, like I said before, I'm not at all happy about the way Ryan Garcia handled this with um, Devin Haney. I'm not knocking Devin at all for what he did. He shoved that man and got him out of his face, and that's what you're supposed to do leading up to a fight from a fighter who's just been talking all that trash you know what I'm saying? You, you got to back it up. But it, it kind of gave me that goofy Mickey Mouse Club vibe when you just turn around and, and run away like you fucking around with one of your partners. And y'all act like y'all about to fight, slap box or something. And then right when they get, you know, close to y'all throwing hands, you say, oh, man, I'm just fucking with you, man. Dap each other up. You know, this dude turned around and went into the freaking crowd. You blew the moment. You blew the MF and moment again, brother. What's wrong with you? What you got? Uh, something, something, something's wrong with this dude. If he gets in there and start doing a showsy ozy posy with Devin, I hope Devin really make him pay by step around him and, and, and send some uppercuts or hooks or whatever. I hope the action don't stop every time Ryan turns around because I, I, I believe he's going to be turning his back on um, Haney in the fight. I hope the action doesn't stop like it did with Duarte. You know what I'm saying? Step around him and, and 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 freaking give him the business, man. You know what I'm saying? Uppercut, hook, all of that. But you know, this is this is making this route um way around social media. It's going semi-viral right now. Being that people are really looking forward to this. But you walk up there with no shirt on with a pack, and you're the first one to retreat. I can't respect that, bro. You know, Devin got his whole hand laced you know what i'm saying bandage it he he used his hand as a tourniquet devin devin put you know 
put his made his hand a tourniquet to stop the breathing. Use the tourniquet as a plot to stop the bleeding. He used his hand as a human tourniquet to basically restrict your airway, Ryan. And you you didn't like the feeling of that shit. You turned around quick. Oh. <coughs> Let me get back over here. Shit, where my security at? Shit. Nigga, you 385 pounds, man. Goddamn. You should have punched him or something. Man, goddamn team Haney had like a whole motherfucking special forces team out there. That one bodyguard of security that Ryan has, it ain't enough. Shit, Devin had a, a goddamn hand tourniquet on Ryan's neck. You know what I'm saying? Stop the breathing. Ryan didn't do anything except turn around. I was I was I was looking at this shit and I was like shaking my head. I said, man, I hope you don't get in the in, in, inside those ropes and do the same shit, brother. I really don't. I, I hope you don't do that same shit. Shout out to my guy the news by Shot News Sauce Experience is in the building. Team Tuck official on deck. What's good with it? Appreciate you pulling up. Yeah, man, you know, whenever I want to really get into it, you know I can. I just, uh, you know what I'm saying? I just leave it alone, man. You know, every now and then I go back into it, you know. But, yeah, man, you can't sit up here and retreat like that when you pull up on the scene like Rambo, man, with a pack on your back like you're ready for war. And then the war it's, it's just verbal, and then when it gets physical, you retreat. You retreat. What the hell is that shit, man? You retreat. It's just stupid, man. That's 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 just. Devin did what he was supposed to do, but Ryan, I don't know what his goofy ass. That dude, he he need to he need to retire from boxing after this fight. If he loses this fight, he need to retire from boxing. And go to the silver screen. He need to become a Hollywood actor. I'd rather see him on a soap opera or something. Or, you know, not action movies just yet. Because you got to give his boxing career time to leave the um, the catalog, the psychological catalog of, of a boxing. You got to get that time to absolve. Then really start bringing him into movies. Because, man, if you put him in the Expendables like you did Victor Ortiz, they're not going to believe Ryan's out here. You know what I'm saying? Putting hands on somebody. No, nah, they're not going to believe that shit. They're not going to believe like they believe Ronda Rousey. You know, and shit like that. And Vic, um, Victor Ortiz. They're not going to believe it. Believe me when I tell you. They're not going to believe it, bro. <clears throat> Salute Bruce Guys Boxing Jazz and more in the building. Salute to your OG. I see on deck. Arnold Brown in the building. I see you, man. Ryan turned pink after that shove. I told you he put a hand tourniquet over his trachea to, to restrict the breathing, y'all. That's what Devin did. You got to be careful about those types of shoves, man. They can do damage, real talk. In self-defense, that, that can do real damage, man. You got to be careful. You got to be careful moving forward. Don't go to, don't save yourself, bro, because you're going to get a fighter. You do that to the wrong fighter, they're going to bitch up, man. They're going to say, I'm having problems breathing and stuff like that. I'm telling you, bro. Um, you know, I'm a support whenever I can. Haven't been in the best of health. Balling. Thank what? Dang, man. Sorry to hear about that, Haynes. Damn. Man, God bless you, bro. I'll definitely be praying for you. Definitely, bro. Real talk. Did not know that, man. That's crazy. That's, man. That is unfortunate news to hear, man. I definitely um, wish the best for you and we're praying for you. No doubt about it. Hope you're able to recover from this, man. You know what I'm saying? Pops died from prostate. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, God bless, man. God bless you and the fam, man. Real talk. That is really unfortunate right there. Damn, brother. Y'all make sure y'all give a prayer for Haynes' legacy, man. He's he's battling pancreatic cancer. You know what I'm saying? Anything with cancer on it besides the, 
you know, anything else. That shit is tough, man. That ain't nothing to play with. That ain't nothing to play with. Real talk. <clears throat> Ron's a funny dude, expendable. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, Ryan, you know, they're going to have to really figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Come this week. Like, I don't know if they have a final presser. I really don't care. To, I, don't, I really don't care to see the see the press conference, being that he got, you know, shoved in the trachea like that. And then you look at what, what, what the word's going to do. Like, I haven't seen anybody do that to Crawford. I've seen Jose Benavidez shove him. But I, I you, you know how he came back, right? I, I, I haven't seen, like, Javante Davis. He he shoved Roley, Esau Cruz, Yorkis Gamboa. He shoved plenty of people. Damn near everybody he stepped in. He shoved them, man. I think the only one he really didn't shove was Mario Barrios, I think. I don't think he shoved Barrios. But, you know, he, he just he just push, push him in the chest. He don't do nothing crazy. You know what I'm saying? He just push him in the chest, you know, a little light touch, light tap. But when you're shoving a fighter real real tough, you know what I'm saying, that, that you know, according to who, who across from you, they really can bitch up on you and say, you know what, my throat not, not feeling. I feel a little swelling. It's hard for me to swallow. If I'm having a hard time swallowing, I ain't going to be able to breathe correctly. You know what I'm saying? It's it's people that hey, you may not think that, but it's possible, bro. You know what I'm saying? Real talk. Yeah, for sure. Definitely give a prayer out for Haynes legacy, man. You know what I'm saying? Real talk. Definitely give a prayer for Haynes battling pancreatic cancer. It ain't nothing to play with at all. You know what I'm saying? We will be praying for you, no doubt about it. King Ryan will stop Devin. I can't wait. No, I don't. I don't see it, man. I don't see it happening. You know what I'm saying? I don't see it happening. And I'm gonna see it differently this time because I'm definitely not betting anything on it. So I'm gonna be sitting back, lighthearted. You know what I'm saying? Lighthearted and chilling. Had to tune in. Um, back you up, Haynes. Shout out to Jones is on deck, man. Salute to you. I see you in the building, brother. Yeah, be sure to give a prayer for Haynes Legacy and his family, man. That is nothing to play with, brother. Let me um transition off of of Haney them because you know they're gonna be who they are. You know what I'm saying? Team 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 um Garcia. They're gonna be who they are. And um I just can't wait for the fight. I don't know who's gonna win this. Who I want to win is Haney. I want Devin to go in there and box Ryan's career, you know, right out the ring into Hollywood. That's all I want. I want him to goddamn go in there and, and put hands on Garcia, give him a boxing lesson, and freaking so he can go be on the next reality show with his girl. You know what I'm saying? Um, put them on no jumper. You know, they can start doing their media rounds, no jumper. You know what I'm saying? DJ ac Academics, um, Breakfast Club, shit like that. Start getting acclimated to Hollywood. And leave boxing alone. That's all. Because I don't want you to go up here and lose this time and then get a whole nother title shot again with some some other champion. I'm I'm tired of seeing you. Boxing's gonna be tired of seeing him. You know what I'm saying? That's 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 where I'm at with it. Damn squad! So that was my transition, man. Let's 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 get down to the man, the myth, the legend, Deontay Wilder. Is in the news, y'all. And I love putting up my own pictures. You know what I'm saying? Those in the background, of course. I just want to make that clear because somebody said, I mean, I saw that picture on Google again. I have plenty of content of, of Wilder, okay? I just didn't feel the need to go and, and grab it all. But Deontay Wilder has made a huge decision when it comes down to life-altering um twists and turns and routes you take people have to understand they are willing to make changes in their life you know what i'm saying i remember when when i was 17 and i was joining the court right i remember when when i was in boot camp i wasn't getting too many freaking um 
letters and stuff because when 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 I left go to um, boot camp, I didn't tell my parents anything. I just went and signed up, and then recruiter called and say, you know, I heard. I, I remember when when they um was talking to mom, and they say, hey, we wanted to um, get your permission to um, sign off on your son's um, package because he's seventeen years old. And then she she said, what package? And he said, oh, he joined to go in the Marine Corps this time and other. So, you know, um, she gave the phone to dad. And dad had like he was upset. At that point in time, man, I was I was ready to throw hands. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I already been in a situation with Pops. But, I mean, I, I wasn't trying to hear none of that, man. I just signed the package. I'm out. And I just graduated. You know what I'm saying? The whole situation went down with that. So I remember just just getting ready to go, sign the paper, I'm out, right? So when I was in boot camp, you know, I I, I was I was hearing certain things um in letters about, you know, people criticizing me. You know, in the South, it wasn't a lot of people like it is now that was going to the military. Like, don't get me wrong, it's people that was going to the military, but People used to tell, tell me, right, when we used to have these conversations in high school, how, you know, recruiters would come to the school and they'll say, hey, don't really base your decision off your friends around you because a lot of them are going to tell you don't go in the military because you're working for the white man. You're working for the white man. Yeah, you're working for the white man, right? So I said, the white man? Who is the white man? Because last time I checked, we got to pay the white man in Texas. You know, goddamn Uncle Sam's supposed to be white. But don't, you know... Don't go work for the white man. I say, who am I supposed to work for then? And this is definitely going to be an eye opener for those of you that's going around here listening to the stories that's being told about Deontay Wilder sitting shoulder to shoulder with Eddie Hearns, his nemesis. So when I get up out of there, man, I come home and all this shit, you know, family acting funny and all that shit, you know, something you have to live with, get through, mature. And, and, and let it and let it don't you know crush your shoulders, man. Don't try to wear that burden. So when Deontay Wilder was doing what he was doing coming up through the ranks, I'm pretty sure he known he knew that coming out of Tuscaloosa, Alabama, man, this is going to be a, a heavy heavy journey for him when he decided to take on boxing. Tough. You talking about fast tracking without the amateur pedigree, the extensive amateur pedigree, before going into the Olympics. We talking about that, that's not being his first sport, one he was dedicated and locked into, right? So he finally get up to that door to, to, to go to the Olympics and end up getting a bronze, right? And he was dropped in the Olympics too, you know, man, he, was, he went through the struggles of having a lack of experience and technique. You feel me? So he had to go through that, those hardships, man, those trials and trips, man, those ebbs and flows, you know what I'm saying? He had, he had, to, he had to put it put it through and, and work through the Olympics. And at that year, I believe he was the only freaking um US male to you know in the on boxing to medal. And you know that that makes his his freaking um his moniker that much special because how he got the bronze medal and he you know basically using that moniker um as his alias throughout boxing, the bronze bomber. You know, bronze with the with the with the heavy right hand. Now you have to ask yourself, if you're gonna call yourself the bronze bomber in the heavyweight division, and you're not even truly a heavyweight, this man used to fight at a lighter weight. I'm talking about he was in the heavyweight, but he's one of the lighter heavyweights. You know, Tony Bell, you came over here. He was a lighter heavyweight, but he wasn't he 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 he, he wasn't knocking him down like that. He didn't have that special one hit a quitter. Like like Deontay Wilder did, so when you um see what he had to go through and how he built, okay, let's talk about who he signed with initially. Okay, I hear all the bullshit of these black fight fans that's out here criticizing Wilder for going to Eddie Hearns, and sometimes I just want to ask y'all, you know, why don't y'all just stop the bullshit, man? It's always gotta um relate back to race all the time. You know, a lot of you cats wasn't even a, a, no way, shape, or form attached to Deontay Wilder when when he was um heavyweight champion. You know what I'm saying? Nigga like me was in the streets. I didn't see y'all niggas out there. You know what I'm saying? People people talk about how every time Wilder's name come up, 
they want to bring up the LDBC. LDBC then make Wilder, and LDBC then break Wilder. I don't know what they did for him besides him coming on the platform, but, you know, people always used to ask me, you know, why Wilder won't come on your platform? I say, I don't know, and I don't care. I've been in fight camp with Wilder. I don't see him all over the place. I don't care if he don't come on my panel. But what I do know is I had the opportunity to meet that man while he was reigning, defending heavyweight world champion out of Tuscaloosa, Alabama. That's all I can. I, that's all I can tell you. All that shit coming on the freaking platform. I didn't need it. But people are now feeling some type of way to go back to a, to a situation that they never left. The Wilder haters that really hated Wilder, they still going to hate Wilder. The ones who feel some type of way just based off how he, how he talked and how he fought in the ring, they still going to hate him. It don't matter if he's black or white. You know, YTC is one of those great, great examples if you follow any type of sport on what fan base not to intertwine yourself with because it's just contaminated. It's very contaminated. And you're going to see people talk about black to white. No, it's black to black at the end of the day. The LDBC didn't do shit for Wilder. If he chose to say they was with him back in the, back in the day and he chose to rock out with him online, that's his choice. Nigga is a grown man. Now, you look at him and, 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 and let me provide some steps for you. Wasn't he with Golden Boy initially? Why y'all wasn't tripping when he was over there? Is 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 is, is was Oscar um, De La Hoya? Is he an African American? Why you wasn't all on you know Oscar's head with all the controversial picks and suspect freaking behavior that he's been? Wasn't Deontay Wilder over there initially? Y'all failed to mention that, right? Wasn't he with Golden Boy? Y'all will sit up here and mention how PBC took Golden Boy fighters. But you're not going to mention how Wilder was over there with Golden Boy. He was over there with Golden Boy, man. Why y'all not worried about that? Because he's a minority. He's close to a minority. He's not Caucasian. So Wilder comes over here and they say, uh, yeah, Al Heyman took all De La Hoya. Okay. Okay, let's get to that. So he comes over here and he become a part of the PBC and Al Puba. So he's up underneath, all nice and warm with a lot of other fighters of Al Puba. The crazy part about it is like that, that really didn't make y'all happy either that he was over at PBC. Real talk. That's why this whole entire Eddie Hearn situation is a, is, is a toilet full of shit once again. I'm talking about diarrhea. These niggas run off at the mouth all the time. Whenever they feel like it's an easy conversation to put Wilder's name into when they didn't even give him credit when he was at PBC. The nigga was undefeated. Knocking heads off. Knock if you buck. Knocking heads off. Signed to a black man. And now all of a sudden, you see him over there with Eddie Hearns able to get that check over there in the sandbox and y'all up here calling him a coon it don't fucking matter y'all niggas never fuck with Deontay Wilder anyway you didn't give a fuck about him when he was signed with Al Heyman and you don't give a damn about him now all you trying to do is just find another way to get content out and try to make it seem like it's new refreshing information y'all niggas didn't support him anyway when he was signed with PBC was when he received the most criticism being signed under a black man. Him being signed to Al Puba did not change the fact of the barometer of criticism that you chose to temperature against Deontay Wilder. Y'all still criticized the shit out of him, bro. He couldn't do nothing wrong. He was undefeated, undefeated. We had just came off a of Klitschko brother depression and these niggas act like they dumbfounded as hell. They call themselves aficionados, but they ain't real talk because how are we supposed to survive? How, I mean, put, I'm going to take that back. How are we supposed to lay claim that it's all Wilder's fault 
when we just went several years upon several years with no U.S. heavyweight champion after the last one was left, lost his title. Now Wilder come along, Olympian, you know what I'm saying, an Olympian, and he signed when, when he really started to pick up Al Puba, and people are talking about, oh, Al took Golden Boy. Now they want to glorify that shit, but then it's no way for them to stop criticizing Wilder once he got to Al Poop and PBC. So he fights and fights and fights. He build up his resume, stacks up his freaking body of work, his portfolio. Some of the best highlight reels out there in the heavyweight division. You know what I'm saying? The bronze bomber, bomb squad. Up under the black man. This, this is another crazy part. This is another crazy part, right? Deontay is 38 years of age now. This man is clearly on the out in his professional career. So, peep this out now. When he fought Joseph Parker, he was coming off inactivity from fighting Robert Hellanius. So, he fought Robert Hellanius October 2022. And then came back being out of the ring for a full year. Why Joseph Parker now? Let's 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 look at Joseph Parker. Joseph Parker. Um. Had been stopped by Joe Joyce September twenty twenty two. January twenty three, he fought Jack Macy. Then he turned around in um May of twenty three and fought Opelu. Then October twenty twenty three, he fought. Um, Simon King then December 2023 okay he fought Deontay Wilder he was very active that's what I'm trying to say when he was stepping in there and he fought Joseph Parker it wasn't none of this hate going on they was like oh Deontay Wilder coming back of that Robert Hellenius fight now we get to see if he's who he used to be is he still bomb squad this, that, and the other. So he went in there and lost that fight. Scorecards. 111, 118. 108, 120. 110, 118. Landslide. Landslide. I didn't hear any one of these niggas talking about why he over there fighting in the sand. Why he messing with the sheiks. Their skin complexion is different than ours. Why y'all wasn't over there complaining about him getting money in Saudi Arabia. I didn't hear you 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 being vociferous about that. Y'all was very short with the words. You know what I'm saying? Y'all was just happy to see him back in the ring. But then it slowly picked up again once he lost to Joseph Parker. People started hating on him again and saying he was he was you know he was washed up Tyson Fury but but Hardcore aficionados, that's what they call themselves. This man fought, considered the best heavyweight that was in his division that can go with a trilogy with him. He fought the man three freaking times and lost two of them. He wanted to go out on the shield and he did. He steps back. You know, I, I, I can go back to when Eddie Hearns was receiving that hate. I was one of the ones, I was one of the ones that was getting giving Eddie Hearns the hate because he was busy out here pushing Fury Joshua, Fury Joshua, when Deontay was in arbitration for his trilogy with Fury. And he won that and he was able to go in there and fight Fury in, in, um, in a trilogy. Still him and Anthony Joshua, Fury and Anthony Joshua still him fought. Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua still him fought. And that's all to do with, you know, um, Joshua not wanting. Eddie Hearns didn't want him to fight Deontay Wilder. For whatever reason, back in the day when they was both undefeated, Hearns didn't want Joshua to fight Deontay Wilder. He wanted to make as much money off um, Anthony Joshua as possible. He knew back then that Anthony Joshua would get knocked the fuck out. People that talk and speak about this potential matchup will say the same thing. You can talk about the way a man look, how skinny his legs is, how he talk. 
But then when, when you talk about that P-O-W-E-R, that motherfucker is not racist. <laughs> that right hand ain't racist, goddammit. That motherfucker is not user-friendly. It's there for one purpose and one person purpose only, to have a monologue. Keep it short, quick, and simple, and straight to the point. That's all it's there for. Eddie Hearns has said some things in the past about Deontay Wilder that definitely will make people question why Wilder went over there, right? So let's go back to some old tweets that he sent out in 2023. Certain things come to an end as the years get older. It's called growth. It's called growth, man. This was damn near a month out before Spence and Crawford went in there. And the T-Mobile massacre presented itself to the world. We all know one of Deontay Wilder's most, most, most brutal fights. You know what I'm saying? Happened during the pandemic, February 2020. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he lost he lost the uh, rematch with Tyson Fury. He lost his belt. That was his first loss. Let's look at this right here. Never let anyone dim your light. We are all capable of doing multiple things in this world. And I like how he says multiple. Because sometimes my people, it seems to me we get complacent. They, they always want to talk about this union, this camaraderie, this esprit de corps amongst black people. But I've seen in the boxing community, this is one of the, the, the premier fan bases that are absolutely the worst when it comes to combat sports. It's one of the worst in professional athletics, the boxing community. There's definitely some mental illness going on with this fan base. Because they act like boxers, depending on who they support heavy, they're not supposed to make changes. When these same people are making changes in their everyday life with their jobs, ain't nobody going to work at a motherfucking job and not get a raise for 30 fucking years. You got to understand that boxing doesn't have that freaking outlet, that stipend that you get like vets or anybody else that's retiring from these civilian um, corporate organizations. They get a retirement stipend. They may get health care benefits. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Pops being able to, to, to set that up for moms. He worked his tenure and was able to, she was able to benefit from him and what he worked so hard for. Deontay said, never let anyone dim your light. We all are capable of doing multiple things in the world. Some people would not like what you do because they can't figure out their problems. But... That's okay because many will love and appreciate what you give to this world. My light will always shine. And I think that's a very important part that he's saying his light will always shine because you got to have confidence in yourself. Whether others do or don't, you got to have confidence in, in, in yourself. Deontay has kids to take care of. We all know the history of him saying the reason why he started boxing because his daughter has spina bifida, right? I mean, is that not commendable? I think that's more commendable than people, you know, every time veterans, they come around and say, uh, uh, thank you for your service. Or, you know, you up there, you, you have the conversation with somebody being a real ass, right? And then they find out you're a veteran. They try to switch it up. Oh, I didn't know that you, no, I'm still black first. I was black before I was a vet. No, just keep the same image. Don't bring the vet. Oh, so no, no, you know, um, you have to, you have to excuse me, you know. I mean, and sometimes I, I just have a quick, no, no, don't let the veteran stuff calm you down. Like, you got to be a good person or you ain't. You know what I'm talking about? You got to have confidence in yourself. You got to know what direction you're going. And for Wilder, he had, he had other responsibilities, such as taking care of his kids and taking care of loved ones and everybody in his circle, you know, and everything. But, but check this out, where they're trying to go with this Eddie Hearn shit. Now they want to bring up JDs. Everything deals with the white man. You know what I'm saying? Everything for Wilder, being from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, when these fools start to open their mouth, it deals with the white man. The white man did this. The white man did that. 
the white man did this. But if it was all about the white man, why you didn't keep your racial views, right? If you was a racist, why you just didn't keep your views first and foremost up front? Let everybody know in the loudest possible voice. Poss just let everybody know. Let it rain. You should have said how you disapprove of Wilder working for the white man. You should have let it be known. Why are you going to criticize him now? Like you should have just kept it on the white man. If it was all about the white man, you never really had to bring Wilder into it because Wilder was doing what fighters supposed to do. You know, he was training, he was winning, he was knocking cats out in the heavyweight division. Um, that's pretty much how it goes down, right? But you should have kept it on the white man. They want to talk about him being signed to Shelly Finkel. So a white man, we, we have several fighters. Shout out to David McWhorter. He's a white manager. We have several black fighters signed to David McWhorter's. I, I, you know, if you're going to mention Deontay Wilder, you know, signing at, at one point in time with the Shelly Finkels and the Luda Bellas, keep it on them. Because really, don't bleed it over to Deontay Wilder making a grown man decision. A, a man that has to attend to business. He is the motherfucker going to fight camp. Y'all are bringing all this shit to the surface. Because he signed with Eddie Hearns, a white man, a, a Brit that he had issues with. We have problems with people every day in life. As black people, some of those people, a lot of those people are our own kind. They walk around with blades. They would try to slice you up for no fucking reason. So when I when I when I see people talking about he sold out, how the fuck did he sell out? He's 38 years old. What did this say? This tweet. Learn how to stop worrying about what people think about, think or say about you and live out your purpose, or else you're going to miss out. How is he not living out his purpose? The man is making money on the back end. What it's all about? Are we really talking about? Overlooking the fact of him doing business over there, him him having the opportunity to fight another, you know, ranked contender in the heavyweight division after, look, after coming off a lopsided loss against Joseph Parker. I mean, Joseph Parker looked very, very good in that fight. Solid. Domination. He, he looked dominant in that fight. Deontay didn't have it. But why feel some type of way in bringing JDs, somebody who knew Deontay since day numero uno? Why bring him in there all because he's a white dude? Man, they bringing up every white person Deontay would have freaking ever had encounters with. And, and these cats that did nothing to build up his career. A lot of these cats just dislike Deontay Wilder. They'll love Jared Anderson, though. Deontay Wilder wasn't on nobody mug shots, but they loving Jared Anderson though. Oh, his skills look better. And he, he, he look a little cuter than, than Wilder. He look a little cuter. Cause we got these grown, we got these grown men today. You know, they, 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 they blink in their eyes twice. Like, um, you know, the genie in the bottle. Now it's all about marketability. I remember they used to say that shit about Wilder. Oh, nobody's going to market him because he don't know how to talk. Well, he talked too much and all that. He's a loud mouth. You know what I'm saying? They're not going to market him. But yeah, when it comes to Anthony Joshua, yeah. Anthony Joshua, they love some Joshua. They used to hate on Wilder just based off his looks alone like they do Crawford. Two dark-skinned fellas in a sport where they reached the highest pinnacle, the championship pinnacle, but yet, yet had their own people just stepping on them at any given time they had. Stepping on him with criticism all the time. And, and, and you sit up here and you have a problem with him doing business with Eddie Hearns? I mean, how does that even work? The man, Eddie, is brushing elbows with the sheep. Turk out the sheep. He's brushing elbows with royalty, right? I remember when these, these same black content creators was arguing. 
you know, um, they were, they were mad when Eddie Hearns came up with that one billion dollar the zone deal, and it wasn't even that he got one billion right off the back in one lump sum. It was contingent deal, right? And the rest is history for Eddie. It's been several black fighters that's been signed. Haney then was doing business over there, weren't they? Weren't they? Wasn't there plenty of black fighters that's over there right now? Raymond Ford just had a spectacular Rocky moment. I don't think I heard the criticism from Raymond. Why, why wasn't it a criticism of Raymond Ford? He's over there working for the white man. Tevin Farmer, why y'all weren't criticizing him? He was working for the white man. Why, why y'all not over there criticizing him? Car Carissa Shields been over there with, with Eddie Hearns, right? Why y'all not criticizing her? She's darker than Deontay, damn near. I'm just curious. I'm just asking the questions, man. I'm, I'm just curious to know why you all don't have the same level of intensity, the same effort, the same desire to make a point with other black fighters that have had white managers, that have had white managers, white promoters, and you want to make a big fucking deal because Deontay is over there with the person who he's had words with. So tell me how this works, right? So you're mad that that him and Eddie Hearns is doing business together. But then again, fighters step in the ring with, with, with fighters opposite their ethnicity and fight all the time and break bread and everything. And, and sometimes they show sportsmanship at the end. So I guess they are Uncle Tom and a coon also, right? What about the fighters who are signed under these promotions that's not a black promoter? We've seen black fighters under Bob Arum. But time a problem comes out about a black fighter, y'all want to say he racist. And then when a nigga like me tell y'all, well, I, I, I've, I've, I've done credentials over there, and they way, way better than any credential I ever got with the PBC. They way more professional over there. They let you work. They let you, they let you enjoy the money that you spent to get on deck and cover boxing. I don't hear a lot of my people talking about that because I'm going to be honest with you. Um, when I was covering, I didn't see a lot of brothers over there at, at top rank. Y'all already, y'all wanted to corral at the rally point of PBC where they act like you in a concentration camp where they want to talk to you like you ain't shit. Now we have fighters that's leaving the PBC. And a lot of you all don't even have contacts to reach out to motherfuckers to find out the real truth. You don't have it. You just talking from the outside looking in. I've, I've always had that connect. And I told y'all periodically here and there. I said, hey, I talked to my person, you know, my peeps at the PBC. Oh, man, you don't like the PBC. How you can talk? It don't have shit to do with what I like. I'm a grown ass adult. Unlike in this media business, you got motherfuckers that'll tell on you. Hey man, you know don't don't have somebody don't don't go don't don't get WCS a credential, man. He said something about this, that, and the other, and all that. I'm like, look, I was rocking with Deontay heavy when he was with the PBC, and still was treated like shit. I was was freaking berated in front of people when I wore a till this day T-shirt, and that bitch Kelly walked up on me and started arguing, yelling at me to my face while I had my camera on. I've never released the video. If that would have been me, if that would have been me doing that to her, these same niggas that you hear criticizing Deontay, they would have looked at me, oh man, why he do that? You never should have did that to a woman. She's a, she's a, she's a wholesome white woman. She did that shit to me. If it would have been me doing that to her, oh, I would have hold another. I would have been banned forever. But she's up in my face, and that's how they let shit run. Y'all never talk about that. Y'all never talk about how they treat damn certain media over there. If you independent media, you never talk about that shit. All y'all talk about is the black man, the black man, the black man. But while they put it out, it'll be good to get your money on time.
Were y'all criticizing him then? No, nah, y'all was hush ass about that shit. Now Wilder's out there doing business with Eddie Hearns and not stand up under a, 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 a clout where he's going out here and earning his keep, but the paycheck ain't on time. So he's supposed to be criticized for going over there to, to, to basically do business with Eddie Hearns when he's not getting paid on time, allegedly. Over there, his former. Place of resident. This shit don't make no motherfucking sense how gullible y'all can be. Y'all niggas always complaining about shit when it comes to white and black. When y'all niggas need to goddamn stand up, posture. You know what I'm saying? Find a good, clear mirror, goddamn it, and a damn a, 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 a little half. You don't need a full half container on Windex and some damn towels. Spray that shit on the mirror so you can get a good look at yourself. Because y'all motherfuckers mad at him working with you're mad at him being with Luther Bella and freaking um Shelly you mad at any other white person that he that he be in conversation with you know what I'm saying you would have been mad if he left Golden Boy with the top rank and worked for Bob Arum he goes over there and he's with PBC for years and, and look his own people was goddamn vilifying the shit out of him not because he was showing up on the police freaking mug shots not because he was speeding down the highway not because you know anything like that he being on drugs intoxicated in public stealing you know what i'm saying shit like that knocking knocking heads off of women domestic violence you know what i'm saying doing illegal shit not paying his taxes you know having his cars repro repoed and shit you know what i'm saying i mean you 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 didn't hear none of that shit but these, these niggas want to be mad at Deontay for being black and from Alabama. He's black from Alabama. They was loving it when, when him and Eddie Hearns was going back and forth. Loving it. Loving it. And now he's at a point where he's doing business with Eddie, who, who, who's legit. He's certified official. Wilder's not the first black fighter that Eddie has signed. So why the fuck are y'all up here calling this man a Sambo and a Coon for? Man, y'all some of the most delirious, psychological, dilapidated, degenerates I know. My people. Y'all fuck off the race the wrong freaking way. Y'all just act impulsively on a motherfucker that, that you want to target. There's been a target for a long time. Y'all just want to impulsively act off old shit. Y'all want to find a way for another black person to criticize something that another black man is doing. Y'all y'all probably did something similar to that in your life. The good thing about it, the people can hide behind avatars and shit and goddamn, you know, just pretend like they 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 really the perfect citizen. You know what I'm saying? The perfect citizen in life. They the perfect citizen. They really can pretend that. But this man is being vilified once again because he's about to make another paycheck. He's 38 on his way out the door. And my people mostly are saying that, oh man, you, you over there with the devil. You the motherfucking devil. Y'all the motherfucking devils. Y'all the motherfuckers that's around the devils. Y'all are the helpers. The ones that freaking criticize all the time. Y'all are the motherfucking assistants. Y'all are coming up with certain ways on how to be evil. Your middle name is malicious. This is the worst septic tank of media that you ever should immerse yourself with. When it comes to the bullshit that goes out on certain fighters, I put this out there. I say, yeah, they sitting up here criticizing, whining about what Wilder isn't doing. He's a one trick pony. He only has a right hand, right? Check this out. And I said, when he leaves the heavyweight division, they're going to be clamoring for him to come back. They're going to be hoping and wishing. Where is he? Where is he? So when he was in between the rematch and the trilogy, what were they doing? Uh, Wilder should talk. Wilder's going through mental health issues. 
is Wilder over the Fury and his career. Fury and his career. Wilder's not coming back to the sport. He's done. He's over. This man had one freaking loss, y'all. Jada, um, Joshua, on the other hand, when he took his first loss, he straight up QUIT from a, from a, from a replacement that was much shorter, both in height and reach. And he beat the brakes off Joshua and made him quit. Nobody was talking about that, and that was his first loss. We're talking about a unified champion. So in Wilder, fighters stopped on his feet. They threw in the towel. People start saying, oh, he was washed up. He was retired and all that. That is the absolute. I'm, I'm talking about barrels upon barrels of bullshit. These content creators are drinking out of. They have an acquired taste for straight up piss and shit, y'all. They pick and choose whatever fighters they want to have as their favorites. That's what they do. And they try to come up with this, this fantasy land of, of, of rhetoric that they can they can say to, to, to try to create a rivalry. They'll say, okay, I like this fighter, but this particular fighter is in their weight class. So we need to start pushing narratives towards that fighter, you know, the kind of the kind of you know show our honor and our courage and you know our commitment to our favorite fighter. So we got to slam another fighter. It just can't be, oh, I'll, let me just praise this fighter that I support heavy. I mean, Deontay Wilder's gonna have to look back at this and uh, say, okay, when I'm gone for the sport and I'm getting inducted to the Hall of Fame, once again, he says, stop worrying about what people think of, think or say about you and live out your purpose. Else you're going to miss out. Well, he's definitely not going to miss the Hall of Fame. He's in there. He's, he's in there. And if any fighter that was his age right now, you would be stupid to stay your ass in an organization that seems to be crumbling, tattered and torn, shattered, to stay over there with, with someone struggling to get funding from a network. One that was boasted upon, doing all the right things, knew what they was going in life, everything. Oh man, come over here. They over, you know, you get paid over there. You get paid. Now the shit has dried up. It has dried up. What happens to the ground when it's exposed to extreme sunlight? With no canopy, no foliage. You want Wilder to stay in an organization where it's uncertain of him actually getting the fights that he need at his age. So therefore, it's wrong of him to go over there and do business with Eddie Hearn just because they had a disagreement. You know what that's called? It's called bullshit ass grudges, man. It's called being judgmental. It's called being ignorant and illiterate. This is boxing with no retirement plan. He's obviously, you know, got, got two feet out into retirement for him to sit, sit up there on, um, next to Eddie and say, you know, this, this is gonna, um, Prove whether I, I'm going to stay in or, or get out and I'm retire or not. It, it's, it's one of those um, decision-making fights, man. You either is or you ain't. It's all about how he look against Jane. JD's, Shelly Finger, Luda Bella. You know what I'm saying? From Golden Boy to um, PBC. And from PBC over there with Eddie on the zone. Eddie is, 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 is you're, they're trying to make it seem like Deontay is Eddie Hearns' first black fighter. All the way up to this point, Eddie Hearns has never signed a black fighter because he was racist. That's what they're trying to make it seem like. Oh, he was racist. Deontay Wilder is not even close to being the only black fighter that Eddie Hearns ever dealt with professionally. But just because they had problems and disagreements, you know what I'm saying? They was at each other's throats. Y'all are now going back to the 
derogatory racial comments again about this man? How is he selling out, dude? What make y'all say this, that another black man is selling out if you're not con contributing to his um, monetary wealth, his financial wealth? What makes you, what, what brings us to that point to say a, a black man is selling out? How, how do you come up with all of that? I'm just curious. I need to be educated on this shit from the South and all that. How can a man be all those words and you're not even signing his check? You don't even get to sit in the room where his, where they, where they're doing negotiations. And most of the time you're not even at the fight, but you will get your punk ass over here online and you'll start talking about, oh, I'm mad, I'm mad, mad at what? Ah, oh, Deontay Wilder went over there with Eddie Hearns. Y'all just want some shit to talk about, nigga. A lot of you cats on here, I know the black content creators who covered Wilder when he was champion. And it ain't them LDBC members either. I know I was in the fight camps when Showtime was on deck. I didn't see him there. Look at the footage. I saw the boxing voice. I saw Ness there. That was before Danny. I saw him there. But all these people that's up here, you know, want to want to tell me what the LDBs, I can give a fuck about what they talking about. For a nigga to sit up here and call Eddie Hearns the devil, and they look like Satan themselves, it just shows you, damn, some motherfuckers really have matured in life. They haven't grown one bit, man. They still want to pick and choose a moment where they can make it about race. All alone, they up here dogging out their own people. Finding something wrong with their own people. But when it comes to Wilder, I don't want to hear no LDBC members talking about, oh, man, he over there with the devil. Because you niggas been wearing horn for years. Y'all been parading your ass, dancing around this motherfucker for years with horns. For years. And you thought that WCS was going to once upon a time be a member of y'all? What the fuck? And niggas, you stupid. Deontay Wilder's freaking career don't evolve around him coming on freaking a live stream and supporting the LDBC. That's his choice. But what about the money, though? They didn't pay his checks. They didn't pay. They ain't paying none of these fighters checks to rock with them. I never, I, I, I don't care. One point in time, I did make a live and feel some type of way about Wilder really investing his time into these, 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 these LDBC members. But this is not even about them. I'm just saying he has a choice to support whoever he feel like. He a grown fucking man. You know what I'm saying? This is small. This is just small. This little community, this little boxing community, and you know, you compare it to the to overall populace, you know, global, it's small, but boxing is a global sport. You take this little YTC community, it's 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 not even a speck, bro. It's 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 damn near a granule. It's just like you putting salt in the palm of your hand and you're trying to um count the granules. Man, come on, man. Boxing is small when it comes to their community compared to the overall populace the global populace it is very very small so that's why i picked this out about wilder Wilder's not even one percent of the amount of boxers that's competing in the sport he is an older boxer on his way out the sport and he's fighting a fighter that he said he'll come back and fight when y'all say he was ducking it so he just came off a tough loss and now he's about to step in there with another tough fight and Zhang. And people are already, you know, saying like, oh, man, he, you know, um, he, he ain't no good. He washed up. He's going to go in there and get knocked out by Zhang. Look, Joseph Parker couldn't knock him out. And that's a former world champion. That's a former world champion. He couldn't knock him out. And he looked terrible that fight. All I'm saying to y'all is you can't stop it. No matter what y'all say, this man's selling out, you can't stop his check from clearing. 
Y'all niggas ever thought about that? Why you out here bitching about who he signed to? And, and, and y'all want to bring up old shit? Look, five or ten years can go by with my people. And they still want to remind you why they mad ten years ago. Well, what you did, you said on the YTC, you, 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 you was telling people not to subscribe to me. Man, I can't give a fuck about none of that shit, dog. It would be 15 years. My people still, hey, man, back in there in 2023. I remember you was over there on the panel and do it. You, what? You, we had a fight card. And you're mad about something that I said on the panel 15 years ago. Man, I just throw some bullshit, man. It was a man. Get the fuck out my face, man. This man is about to retire. And here we go. Like it's all fresh and he's the reigning defending WBC heavyweight champion. And now y'all want to revisit all the hate that y'all was out here boiling up. At any given time, oh man, I gotta boil me some Deontay Wilder hate now. And then hey, WCS get up here and talk about it, and they feel they feel inclined to speak from afar. Because none of you bitch ass niggas that get on here and, and tell me I don't know anything about it. Cause a lot of you cats, all you do is speak from the outside and hate on fighters, and you never even cover one of these fighters in person. You just go along with the YTC. And tell people what you don't like. Have, have have a fucked up, illiterate chat of people that's busy up here all about the emojis. Oh, man, I love emojis. And typing and clicking all them emojis. You know what I'm saying? Agreeing with every fucking thing you say. The shit don't stop. The shit never stops, y'all. I ain't gonna lie. The shit never stops. Nobody's never gonna gonna get me discouraged by saying, "Oh, you're a Wilder fanboy." If you think that I'm going to embrace what you just said about me, as to as to give you any type of indication that it has merit and truth to it, you're not the smartest adult in life, because regardless of what you say about me, it has no effect. I'm not going to worry about any of that. I can support who I want to support, how heavy I choose to do so. I think out of thousands upon thousands of fighters, you know, I have my select favorite. So you can have people that have their select favorite and then they come down. Oh, how many blacks you got in there? I remember when people saying, oh, why you don't support any other fighters besides Wilder? And then that's when I, and that's when I showed them the, um, the Tiafimo freaking footage. And then they was like, well, well, that 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 don't mean anything. I mean, come on, man. Stick to the script, bro. Admit when you're fucking wrong. Y'all niggas hate Wilder all the way out the door. This is another opportunity for you and a board and, and, and a freaking um a boring type of platform that you have. You're running out of topics. You happy that this shit came up with Wilder. Because once again, they get to go into this, this algorithm and start speaking all this hate on Wilder for, for talking to Eddie Hearn. And, you know, that's that's how the Ant Hill goes on the YTC. Motherfuckers got to scramble and scurry around looking for content. And, and they hoping God is controversial content. You got Devin Haney, freaking trachea choking Ryan Garcia. You know what I'm saying? That's content. You got Deontay Wilder over there with, with Hearns. You know, that's content. You had Carissa Shields and Baumgartner, you know, going back and forth. It's always something controversial when it comes to boxing. You have people putting hours upon hours upon hours into a piece of social media real estate that they don't own or have any stock into. And they could be doing that for their own business. Just imagine if you actually took the time to do it to your own personal business and continue to put years and years and years and hours upon hours trying to build that up for the general public. And your reimbursement has a higher, way higher percentage than you over here working on this platform trying to be some type of king of YouTube just because you want to hate on fighters and talk shit all the time and build up the algorithm. Man, continue to go to work. 
I'll be standing up there on top of the hill looking down at your ass. Go, go ahead. Go ahead, break your back. Sit down in that chair, nigga. Fire up that live. Talk about goddamn Wilder and Crawford. You know, both of these cats are on their way out the door. And all my people do, they love talking bullshit and hate about two black men that's not in the, in the freaking limelight for doing criminal shit. That's how twisted and backwards we are. Some of us, not all of us. That's how twisted we are. Confused. That you always want to you always want to support the opposite of what you're telling your kids to be. You telling your kids to, to be out here and 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 act like the Wilders and the Crawfords. Stay out of trouble. Keep your nose clean. Do something great in your life. Be special. And then they get on here and they double life. They want to be Batman and fucking Robin and Gotham. Oh man, fuck that, man. We supporting the villain. Y'all wanna y'all wanna have live, live this double life and support the villain. Y'all wanna go in here and support the villains, man. The ones that's out here fucking up. Y'all don't want to support the good guys. Y'all wanna support the villains. Cause y'all don't have enough talent. To, to bring a channel up and, and, and be able to compete with yourself instead of trying to compete with others. You have more content creators over here just trying to compete with being the most controversial channel out there. They want to prove to people, oh man, I don't, I don't, I don't support no fighter. I support the sport. All these people that you hear saying that, look at them now. Look at all the channels that Bill Haney has swooped up easy. That dude, the hustler, man. Look at all the channels Bill done scooped up. The ones that said, no, nah, uh, I, I, I don't support this. I don't support it. Uh -uh. I don't support the fight like that. I support the sport. You all freaking being scooped up. And what they talk about? They busy want to, you know, not that, that channel, for instance, but I'm talking about all the ones that's rocking heavy with Wilder, right? They choose to support him as a fighter. They're a fan of his, and they're a fan of the sport. They would defend. Back in the day, they was blocking people. You had something bad to say about Wilder. These are his supporters. These are the channels that support him. And then you got the haters who busy want to be in his business. I don't know how many grown black men that was talking about this shit on live when, they, when that video came out with him twerking. I said, y'all really feel some type of way. I'm talking about nipples hard you know what i'm saying goosebumps y'all niggas really feeling warm inside watching deontay wilder twerk y'all was talking about that shit so much and then anything personal come out you want to involve their families and shit but if something happened in your life hey man i want y'all to just Keep me, you know, just keep me in your prayers, man. Uh, you know, brother going through some shit, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I called my daughter's boyfriend in the house. And we didn't know it, but we heard some banging going on up top. And we just thought maybe it was a squirrel in the attic or woodpecker. But the only thing, it wasn't, it wasn't a woodpecker that was making a nest. It was him pecking down my daughter. And knock the lining out of her. And I was like, damn. I never thought she'll she'll leave a nest like this. I want to kick her out, but her mother wanted to stay in. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, bro. You be wanting your chat to give super chats. Just help me out, man. I gotta get my daughter on the straight and narrow. My son out here, man. My son getting too many holes. He always on his phone all the time. Just pray for me. Give me some super chats. I'm thinking about open up, you know, a, 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 a kid's facility. I want I want I want to reach back out to the community and give back to the kids because what I got going on and what I've experienced. I want to be able to give mentorship to these kids so they won't be out here in these streets fucking around, smoking weed and drinking. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they'll, they'll have you online wanting to give super chats and pray and all that shit, man. But they, they, the, the, the boxers that's out here living the lifestyle 
and, and not being locked up just to prove a point of acceptance. Hey, man, let me take this L, go away for like five or six years while my career is supposed to be, you know, I'm supposed to be making this money. I'm supposed to be making millions. I'm going to go in here and prove to people that I'm a bad boy. I'm going to get locked up a couple of times and then get out so I can be more accepted. No, Deontay is doing a positive thing by going over there making money. I don't know how much money he's making, but obviously for him to go over there and brush elbows with Eddie Hearns and do business, you know how they always say? It's not personal, it's just business. Why can't, why can't this situation be the same way? Why can't it just be business? And it don't, it don't have anything to do with being personal, man. Why can't it just be business, man? That man can't sit next. You you think people ain't conducted business, don't like each other? What about Frank Warren? What about Frank Warren? Why are they having a five on five? Because they're best friends? What about Frank Warren and Eddie Hearns? Have they have they been best friends? Oh, oh, my fault. They're two white, uh, rich white businessmen, right? They're doing big things. They two, they, they skin color the same, so they don't count. Even they have, have done business together. And they had a worse relationship than Wilder can ever imagine, bro. These are two competing top level white businessmen in life who despise the one another. But yet they're up here talking about Deontay Wilder doing business and calling Eddie Hearns the devil. You know what they say? The devil's a motherfucking lie. Man, nobody give a fuck about what Drew talking about. And the niggas then the niggas wouldn't even wouldn't even take a drive to Alabama. They wouldn't go over there at all. They didn't see none of these niggas out here, you know, covering Deontay Wilder. When that man was undefeated, rain defending, all they did was sit on here and talk about what he need to do and what he shouldn't do and what he can do and this, that, and the other. Man, please. If I knew he was somewhere within driving distance, I'm there. You know what I'm saying? I, don't, I ain't need to be in no motherfucking group to cover the man. I know when I was covering him at the Barclays, I didn't see any of them LDBC niggas there. And see, one thing I would say, yeah, um, yeah, some of his inner circle felt some type of way because I ain't like the LDBC. It's all good. They can't take away the pictures that I got because one thing I can say, two things for, for sure, is that Wild is his own motherfucking person. No matter how many of his people want to feel the way they feel he his own person he's his own person when i was up there when they was unveiling his statue and i was trying to get a picture and somebody was trying to run interference he his own person while the steel went in the building when he wanted to go in the building not when they said oh wow you, you gotta go no, he out there taking pictures. That's why I tell these niggas, fuck you, man. You can say what you want about them, but you ain't never been around them. That's just like the, these other cats. They'll vouch for niggas, right? These fucked up niggas, right? They'll vouch for them. And then they'll tell you, hey, man, whenever I've been around him, he ain't never did anything to me. I'm telling you what I know, not what you have seen. That's where the difficulty comes in at. I'm looking at niggas the saying, okay, has he done something really towards you? Like, has he did something to you? I'm going off that, not based off what you, how he look in the ring, what he talk like, what he sound like. Has he did anything? Has he did anything to piss you off to your face? Has he said, fuck you to your face? Forget his circle. Have he did it? Why was Ryan asking about Devin's mom, which uh, shoved him too? But this is a weak beef. Hey man, like I said, you know, you 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 talking about his mom? What his mom got to do with it? I don't fucking know. I just look at this shit as being, 
you know, worse than than the cartoon series I used to look at back in the day, man. Like, man, it's like looking at the Adams family back in the day, for real. This shit was stupid, man. <clears throat> Wiley did not sell out his business, business, business. Yeah, man. You know, I agree, Christopher. It's it's like what what are we supposed to do when in life we wanna we wanna advance in our own job? So it's just like being in the military. You wanna get promoted. You can't stay in the military and be an E2 for 20 years. And people say, man, well, why? First of all, nobody's never gonna ask you why you stayed in 20 years and you're an E2. It's impossible. You can't do it. First and foremost, but in a fantasy world, scenario based, hypothetically, in hindsight, if you was an E2 and you got 19 years in this bitch, say, man, I'm about to retire. Nigga, you an E2? Yeah, man, what's wrong with that? You got one stripe and you've been in 19. I wanted, I wanted that. Every time they gave me, you know, they wanted me to go a promotion, I turned it down. Why? Because, man. Man, I grew up in a struggle back home, man. I just didn't want to get a high rank where my people thought that I was just losing myself, man, that I, I sold out. So I wanted to be an E2, nigga. I wanted to have one strike. It ain't nothing better than a PFC 19 years in. Yeah. Man, come on. Get the fuck out of my face, man. Y'all tripping. Y'all tripping. Heavyweight legend. Heavyweight legend. It don't matter what he doing when it comes to business. He will be in the Hall of Fame. So let the haters say what they got to say. It's not going to change anything at the end of the day. So let them say what they got to say, man. It ain't going to change shit. Whether he win or lose in his next fight. It's not going to change shit. They're going to come back on here and say the same stuff they were saying before he lost. The same shit they were showing, saying before he lost to Parker. It's not going to change anything. The man is going to give his speech if he chooses to retire, and he's going to be out the sport. Period. They can't stop that man from going to the Hall of Fame. They can't stop that shit. Like I always said, I may not have necessarily been a fan of Wilder as a boxer, but always respect him outside the ring, the way he handles himself very humble, respectfully. So you not being a fan of Wilder is my whole entire point, right? It's okay for you not to be a fan of Wilder, but you preface that by saying what? I respect him outside the ring. You had more people not respecting what he did inside the ring and whatever they wanted to create about him outside the ring. Carlos, you know what I'm saying? I can get what you're saying. You're not a fan of him inside the ring. Okay, he don't fight your, your particular style that you like. I get it, bro. I understand that everybody have their preference of fighter. All right. But then you talk about outside the ring and you want to make it seem like, oh, man, he's doing the worst. What do he do? I just don't like him. But what he do, he always talking. But what did he do? Who who did he beat up outside the ring? Who did he slap? Yeah, he didn't slap nobody. But man, I just don't like him. But but what what do you don't like though? I don't man. He just got some skinny legs. But 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 outside the ring, like what did he do? I I, I need some clarification. Man, you just asking too many questions, man. You know what I mean. No, what what do you mean, man? What did he do? He got he got caught doing something illegal. What did he do, bro? Help me understand. Help me understand. All I all, all I want to know. Just help me understand. And nigga, you talking about shit you don't like about a man personally, like y'all dating. disbanded the pbc don't know hey 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 don't talk don't talk about bud no we got hey don't talk about bud man that's another black man they don't like that try to try to stay on topic carlos I'm, I'm not trying to bring bud into the situation because both of them dark-skinned black men get hated with venom acidic venom you know what i'm saying 
they get hit it with venom. Real talk. But I want I want to you know tell people like I've told them before. When it come down to actually being inside the gym, you would have seen this this banner up there. One champion, one face, one name. I rub it in their motherfucking face because, you know, this is a picture I took myself. I mean, I have tenure up there. I just didn't do one interview. And that's why a lot of these niggas, when it come to Wilder, they can't fuck with me when it come to Wilder. No, neither one of you niggas. It don't matter what, you, what you're talking about, why you don't like Wilder. Only thing you're going to say what everybody else said. You niggas don't have no experience of Wilder. All you want to do is talk about him losing. And then I'm going to compare other fighters in his division losing. That has better skill set than him. They have better skill set. And they lost. So what are you mad about Wilder for again? Oh, he made up excuses. No, 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 no. Let's go back before then. We're not talking about he made excuses in the rematch with Fury. We're talking about the hate way back when him and Joshua was going at each other. When y'all said Joshua was the superior boxer. So what happened when the superior robot, overrated, loses for the first time? Y'all niggas up there trying to coddle him. Y'all brought y'all palm leaves over here. Hey, Anthony Joshua, we here for you, man. We're going to fan you down a little bit. And every now and then, you're going to feel a cold little trickle. We're going to, dang, you know, spray some cold, nice, you know, some ice water on you to calm you down. Then we're going to put some baby oil on you. You know what I'm saying? Give you a massage because I know you tensed up and everything. And we're going to put some shea butter on your hair so it can shine. We're going to really pamper you, Joshua. When Joshua quit the Andy Ruiz, these motherfuckers weren't saying shit. They wasn't saying shit. When, when Wilder lost the Fury, February 2020, man, they was all, oh, man, he should retire. He's mentally broken. He's no more good. But Wilder never quit. He was just in one of the worst fights outside of the two that he had with Fury and Joseph Parker. Joseph had him buzz just like Luis Ortiz did for 42 motherfucking seconds. And he still couldn't drop the bronze bomber. You know what I'm saying? And, and should I remind you where that's at? Bomb squad! Should I remind you, niggas? Should I remind you? The nigga didn't hit the canvas. You think because Tyson Fury did it? You think because Tyson Fury did it? That was it. It was just free. It was just freestyling for everybody, right? Bomb squad. See, it's good when you got your own shit. That's my shit right there. That's my shit. That's from being at the fight camp. You know what I'm saying? That's my edit. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, you niggas can criticize Wilder from going anywhere. All you're gonna do is talk about all the information that you heard, you mad about how he fight. The man has how many losses right now? The man has how many losses? Three losses out of 43 fights with 42 knockouts. How many knockouts he got, Gumbo? 42, sir. 42. Cuatro dos. Four, two. 43 victories, three defeats, two of those defeats are stoppages with 42 knockouts coming off a of Klitschko and, and these niggas would say, oh, he didn't fight nobody. He didn't fight nobody. He didn't fight nobody. They'll go up here and, and praise the shit out of Joshua. Joshua can go over there and, 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 and fight over there across the pond all he wants. And they get mad at me for not liking Joshua as a fighter. I don't dislike him personally. I never met the guy. He's probably a cool dude. He's not my favorite fighter. Only thing I said, Joshua was robotic and overrated. I stayed on point. As my boy Dion to say, I stayed on code. I said he was robotic and overrated. It's two fighters. I, I, I've i been saying that from the earliest test of time. Anthony Joshua and Fasili Lomachenko. Now get racist with that. Go ahead. 
Oh, they're the same. Comp Let's see, Joshua, he's not over there for me. Damn. I wanted it to be racist, man. I know that that WCS man. God damn it! They the same complexion though. Are they in, in way shape or form? No, Loma Chico don't have black hair. You ain't seen that. Uh, Anthony Joshua parent, dad was Nigerian. Shit! But his mother, no, his mother was white though. Yeah. Oh shit! We might have a point. Oh my god, he is racist. You know what I'm saying? Come on, get the fuck out of here. They be trying to come up with shit and make it racist, man. Italian gumbo, 43. 42 have fallen. Everybody he's fought. Besides Joseph Parker. Come on, man. That man had a cemetery of bodies that he had laid down. Off a of Klitschko era, what is he was supposed to do? Now we right back in an era where we don't have a U.S. champion. Enjoy. Enjoy. Real talk. Enjoy. Wilder was selling himself short messing with the PBC. They sat him, um, they sat him up a whole year. The match room, the Saudis done gave him two fights in a six-month period. Drop the sauce on him. Business is business, period. Drop the mf and sauce on a man drop the mf and sauce he went in there to fight, fight joseph parker coming off a year plus layoff when joseph parker had three the four fights and all they do is oh uh, and deontay wilder washed up he washed up man he ain't no good he washed up man oh he looked terrible i swear y'all some hating ass prejudiced racist ass niggas man Y'all are. You are, man. Y'all some petty ass, hating ass motherfuckers, man. Y'all just find motherfuckers to hate. Why, why is all these up and coming fighters getting all this hate? To be a boxer, you got to have more than thick skin. You got to have a clear understanding that you're in the company of a bunch of you in the company of a bunch of idiots. You have to you have to pretty much find out the percentage of people that you want to fuck with and the ones that don't. You can't collect us all together in the same group just because we media and say that we all the same. We're not. But the ones who are the are the um the ones who's fucking it up for everybody, you shouldn't have this like default to say if one fuck it up, it fucks it up for all everybody. And that's pretty much a lot of what's going on in boxing. You have these soft ass media content creators that, that hate on fighters all the time, but then they'll find a look, this happened to me. They'll find a content creator that support a fighter that they hate. And then they'll tell other content creators, oh man, don't fuck with him. He a wilder fanboy. He, he this and that and the other. While they over here supporting all the Hispanic fighters, you know what I'm saying? And like, like I O say, licking the sweat off their balls. And, and it's okay over there um, speaking Spanish and, and just all wrapped up and all, you know, um, fucked up off, off, off freaking being enamored, kissing up. They got so much goddamn kissing ass. They got a full stomach of kissing ass for real. But, but solid point, man. They had that man over there just sitting, bro. A lot of LDBC niggas are snakes and weirdos. That we know. Some of them are cool. Some of them are cool. I can't group all of them together because I, I, I met some LDBC cats that are cool. But we all know the ones who who, who he talking about. We know the ones who he talking about. The ones that always, I, what I found out about them soft ass niggas is that they always want to cry victim. They are freaking provoke, 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 and then turn around and cry victim. Submit paperwork. They are rah, 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 all the freaking time, barking like a chihuahua. And then they'll say, let me grab my keyboard. I need to submit an anonymous letter. I want to get that video taken now. He was talking about me. Shut your punk ass up. They was all over AJ when he lost, but Wilder lost. They was happy as hell. 
Yeah, man, they was up there massaging AJ's shoulders, freaking his toes and everything. You know? Got them getting a dead skin off his the calluses of his hand. Did you hurt your knuckles there, Joshua? Let, let me get the, the calluses. Let me let me shave that down a little bit, Joshua. I'm just gonna oil this up a little. Close your eyes. We're gonna put some. We're gonna put some um some cucumbers over your eyes. You know what I'm saying? Just relax. Listen to the to the music, the ocean, all that. And we're gonna take care. I know that was a tough fight for you. I think your opponent cheated and all that. We're not gonna go into it, man. It's fucked up. You didn't lose. You didn't quit. You didn't spit out your gum shield. The referee just wasn't doing his job. Okay? You took the opponent on last minute. Man, you should fire somebody around you. Fuck out. What's up, hustle man? Salute to your brother. Yeah, Gumbo know what I'm talking about. <laughs> 43, 42 knockouts, man. That's all I'm saying, Gumbo. You know what I'm saying? When you when you on site, you can use your own freaking picks. You know what I'm saying? You can use your own picks, man, whether they like it or not. One face, I mean, one champion, one face, one name, man. Best heavyweight this era. They're going to say, how? How if, if Fury beat him? How many defenses has Fury came close? And will he be able to defend that WBC title 10 times? Will he be able to defend it 10 successful times? Will he even get past Usyk? You know what I'm saying? Is Deontay Wilder considered to be a cheater? Not a cheater. A cheater. You know what I'm saying? You got to put that in perspective too if you're going to say, well, uh, Tyson Fury is the best of this era. No, he 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 he's the best heavyweight right now because he beat Deontay Wilder. That's a proven fact. You know why? Because they put that man on the magazine with Teofimo Lopez and they never put Wilder on there. You want to talk about racism? How can you build off something of no value? How can you get awarded off something that has no value? Wilder had to have value because when Fury beat him, they put him on the freaking fight of the year co-op. How does that happen if, if Wilder wasn't shit to begin with? Anyway, y'all figure that out on your free time, brother. I'm just here to let you know that, that I had the opportunity, you know what I'm saying, to be on deck and see him lay down his opposition. You know what I'm saying? I had the opportunity to live through, you know, the era of the Deontay Wilders, the Bronze Bomber era. You know what I'm saying? Whether they like it or not, they can't do shit about it. These niggas can get on here and talk about how Wilder lost and all that. Nigga, did you cover him? I covered not only this heavyweight, I've covered several heavyweights, man. I was there, there to fight when he fought Luis Ortiz. You do it ain't, ain't, ain't fighting. You know what I'm saying? It, uh, let, let me let me show y'all another little bit because you know unfortunately I wasn't able to get my colleague Shaw News in this, but he was he was at this. Hey, what you got to say, there, champ? What's up, black man? Hey, Deontay, what you got to say? What you got to say? This day, this day, this day, Yes, that was I. That was I. Um, I got the till this day at the fight. I think my colleague Shaw News was just off camera. We was at that termination of dominique brazil you know what i'm saying i got the till this day on record nothing you can do about it it's nothing y'all can do about it you can talk about how wild they didn't do this and then were you at the fight and, and the crazy part about that one i didn't even have look look i i didn't even have but time to maneuver myself right up to 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 you know where he was gonna be walking out change positions, relocate, reassign, reset. And, you know, I've heard that people feel some type of way about me continuing to have this play. Damn squad! And they get mad because the volume's so high. Cut your motherfucking headphones down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, man? Come on, man. Y'all act like nobody can't have no fun, man. 
I'm not going to always be serious about this at all. You know what I'm saying? I talk my shit about the Crawford Spence. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to talk my shit, you know, with 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 um Team Tucker. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to talk my shit about Dan Crawford and his 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 annihilation of Spence. And I'm going to talk my shit about Wilder. I got some T.O. Fimo footage out there, too. Nobody can take it. You can't do shit about it, bro. It's done. I actually walked to the ring with that on that night. I was back in the locker room. Had some hitters back there. Oscar Valdez. Got pictures of him back in the locker room. Richard Comey. Andre. Look, Andre Rogier was back there stretching freaking Comey out. Eddie Reynoso was over there with Oscar Valdez. And Tiafima Lopez was there with the team. Come on, bro. What are y'all niggas doing, man? Y'all talk too much. Do less talking and more walking. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm trying to tell them, Sean News. Do less talking and more walking. I expect y'all to be out there. I'm probably heading out. Look, I'm probably heading out to um heading out there to the fight card. You know what I'm saying? I thought I well, I'm I'm gonna head out there to the Haney Garcia fight card. That's what I'm that's what I'm thinking I'm gonna do. I think I might head out there to the Haney Garcia fight card. You know what I'm saying? And do some media shit. You know I'm saying I already had a plane ticket reserve. I think I might head out there, man. For real. Because they, they these content creators need to do less talking and more walking. Seriously. That's my hour and a half, man. I'll be back on a little later. But I just had to come over here and talk about you know, Devin Haney's trickier choke slash shove of Ryan Garcia. He deserved it. You know what I'm saying? And plus, you know, the truth about Black saying Wilder sold out, there ain't no truth. He didn't sell out. He's getting money. He has to feed all, everyone, including himself, by going out here making a living. This man ain't driving Budweiser trucks or working for Uber or DoorDash. He is making millions on his way out the door. What fighter you know at 38 years old can go over there and even allow someone to, to have attention, I mean, um, interest in signing him at 38 years old to do business over there? Come on, man. How is that possible? We we know the whole we know the whole process about how that 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 plays itself out. Myself and my colleague, we we know the real behind the scene, but I'm not even really trying to go there, man. You know, I'm just happy the man getting paid, he getting his money, and you know, this will always be there for the Wilder haters. This will always be there for you because I will always remind you of that. You know what I'm saying that's another one of my pictures. When we was in flat, when we was on Flatbush in his store when it opened up. For those of you that may not remember, because you wasn't on deck in the area, you know what I'm saying. But um, yeah, that's when the, that's when um the Bronze Bomber opened up his store, and and I purchased one of the shirts till this day, and I was harassed by a staff member because they said I had on a Bronze Bomber. You would have think I had a swastika on my freaking shirt and and i was a black man you 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 could have thought i had public enemy fight the power fight the power you you would have thought i had well if i would have flavor flav i would have been good to go because they say flavor flav is freaking godson of nico ali why should you good to go with that but that goddamn wilder shit mm -mm. to this day no i was prohibited from going into the event until I go and change my shirt out. I was too far from the hotel, so I had to go purchase a shirt. Once again, um, withdrawing money out the budget, get a shirt, and return. And then that same person tried to give me a hard fucking time because they weren't satisfied I changed my shirt. You told me to go get the shirt, else I wasn't getting in. I switched the shirt. And then you act like you still wouldn't let me in. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, God God is good. God is good. 
You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? I will continue to this day to let them know when when I was out there, um, you know, in them streets, I I, I just didn't see these these cats that, that may feel some type of way about Wilder doing business with Eddie Hearns. I could care less. I didn't see you out there at this fight camp. You don't have no reason to be mad at this man. These new wave of content creators is not going to fights unless it's their favorite fighter. Mm, that's not what we're talking about. That's not what we're talking about. Just going to fights just because it's your favorite fighter. We're talking about going to amateur tournaments. We're talking about supporting what's in your backyard. We're talking about going to some of these um, promotional cars that they have a whole entire fight card and you go there and work it by yourself. Not trying to say, oh, man, you're going, you're going. Okay, I'm going, I'm going, you're going. Is somebody else going? Is he going? Is she going? Okay, they're going. We all going to meet up together, man. We're going to have lunch and all that. We're just going to kick it. And then we might need to set up a schedule, man, if you plan on going live in your room so we won't bleed, bleed over to each other on, you know, on fight date, man, so we can get the, get the ample amount of super chats so we can make the money back for playing for our flight and our hotel fee and all that. So you saying you didn't buy a ticket? No, I ain't buy no ticket, man. I, I just came up here for the pre press and the weigh in, and I'm gonna do the live from my room, man. I gotta get these super chats back up. I gotta get that money that I spent on the plane. That's what I gotta do. I gotta get that back. Hey, y'all, I'm at the fight. I'm at the fight. I'm at the fight, y'all. Yeah, I'm at the fight. Epic, epic. I'm in my room at the fight. Refresh the super chat. Refresh the super chat. I'm at the fight. I'm at the fight. Nah, bro. No. Nah. But I appreciate everyone for pulling up. As always, salute to y'all. Continue to support and rock out with the channel. Deontay Wilder is always going to um, get that, that, that hate. And I love it. I love it. But you know what I'm saying? Pay attention. There's other fighters that's on the come up. You know what I'm saying? You should be paying attention to that's on their way back to the ring. You know what I'm saying? Jahad Tucker. One of the most entertaining and, 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 and on my way out, I just want to make this note that certain people, I know Timothy Bradley had, had, had you know, is always putting his top prospects and, and that's cool. But, you know, like you can do what you want at the end of the day. But I remember you rolling through the YTC and you said, that's OK. I like when they keep my name in their mouth and, and their mouth. But I'm like, I'm not putting my name, your name out there for no reason. I'm just saying what what's with all the. The blackballing and not recognizing that this is this is a um, very entertaining electric fighter. I don't understand why he can't be one of your top prospects. It's okay because you know you know the best thing you can do when you have a young adult in life that's going through adversity like this is that you're teaching him indirectly. You're teaching him because I remember in his fights when you was criticizing him and he was trying his best to go over there and show respect to you and all that. But then you come up here talking about the blue ticket and he's off balance and he, and you know, he about to get let go and, and this, that, and that. It's a good thing to teach young adults that because they still soaking in everything. Their brain is like sponges and they're learning a lot. And, and, and you're only properly preparing him for, um, to be able to handle those controversial adverse situations later on in his career. That's all you're giving him teaching moments. While his brain is still soaking everything in, sponging everything up. You know what I'm saying? You're introducing him to certain certain um, situations that he may not have experienced until he put some years into the sport. But you, you're allowing him to see how somebody can be a backstabber early. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he's not on nobody top 10 over there. Prospects of the, of the year? Come on, bro. Stop playing. Y'all hold this shit down, man. Shout out to the hottest chat in the MF and game. You know how we.